there's a disagreement. Two people are arguing. One guy's saying, this is going to make history. That's kind of packing up what uh, Naeem said. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a cold. I'm losing my voice. A little gravelly here. This guy is saying, this is like Nobel Prize shit. We got to push this forward. And he's very ego megalomaniac high opinion of himself the other guy's pleading caution like we got to keep this under wraps how dare you back inside a secure place where something's lifted off there's a screen this is not public a very professional feel it's a wrapped tarp looks like what name had um they have to sign for it it's stamped like a retrieval men are guarding it disassembled each step is documented there's a checklist here's the place again supervisor knows what's going on but some of the people that guards don't oh these guys are military perimeter they secure this whole place they're told not to look not to talk these guys are frightened this is not a good detail to be on they could get in trouble they're curious but nervous they need a pass uh, this feels past, not current, not future. Old army truck with a crane, gears, wrenching sounds, a diesel engine. It chugs and goes gobble, 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 you know, bub, 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 diesel fumes. And uh, I don't, they don't know how to judge the weight. They're doing calculations. They have a load master. Here they are lifting this thing. There's concern over who's admitted, like who's allowed which access, who, what duty do you perform, what clearance. And somebody saying, this is a fucking security nightmare. These, Those with skills don't have the clearance. They have to be kept isolated of some knowledge or evidence. It's compartmentalized. This uh, military guy is mad, man. He's like, no control over who's going where. There's commingling of some people who have a job, but no clearance. Some people see what they sh shouldn't shouldn't see. They're talking with people they're not supposed to talk to. Who's designated to go to which area? This got out of hand. It should have been controlled. They're looking at this thing. They're not sure how to proceed. They have to wait for a proper team to come take charge. They're sort of stupefied. They're worried about hazardous material. There's a chain of command and jurisdictional area issues that they're worried about. And now they're looking at this object. They're really interested in the heavy part. They want to remove it and take it for examination, but they're having problems. They, it seems like they can only be near it for a brief time. The problems they're having is like, is this still activated or energized? They don't know how to turn it off. It's quite heavy. It makes them sick to be around it or disoriented. They really want this, but they're really nervous about it. And then I did some whiteboard and we got a whiteboard session where I'm talking about that. But yeah, I got somebody examining stuff that was exotic and uh propulsion communication they didn't know they they, they couldn't figure it out yeah it sounds and like i uh, saw the disc the, so yeah a lot of the talking points that are that are out there publicly dick i think you you picked up on really nice job on that. so okay yeah the this, this story you know richard we're trained to just get data and without a story and my story would have been like they retrieve something that makes them sick and they don't know what to do with it and they're real concerned about who sees it and who gets access to it mm -hmm. so i'll just add the uh, whole thing about becoming sick when they're close to this for a long period of time or feeling nausea i remember that with uh, bob lazar's story but i definitely know that was written about in a controversial book admittedly but an interesting one by a writer named lou balden called in league with a ufo and he i don't know some listeners might know this but he uh wrote about this explicitly saying you know you you only could go into the craft for half an hour at a time if you went in for longer than that you could become ill not everyone believes his story, but I will just say I read his book. I thought, wow, it's quite fascinating. I did speak to him once. Um, I know years ago, Linda Moulton Howe just drilled him for information for everything he was worth. And uh, but that was what he had said that this whole thing about nausea. There were other things he stated about the uh, craft as well. But um, that, that was very I mean, it's just fascinating the way. You guys are picking. You guys are all next level remote viewers. I'm just amazed. Yeah, I I haven't read that book. I 
um i got more yeah i I got a sense of like (laughs) oh oh, man nausea so Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, really cool Uh, interesting okay all right let's move on to Derek's sessions this was one of my initial um pieces and you saw a more evolved piece but as i was warming up and getting into it definitely the exterior exterior of a vessel bright flashing pulse um not part of propulsion but has a different function somebody working on it looks like uh you know some kind of a dashboard perfectly controlled simple but a long journey comfortably working efficiently control panel very bright vessel, very dark outside of vessel. And then there was a different individual observing progress. And for whatever this person was observing, those were strange, uncommon shapes. This is probably the most interesting thing to me, but this person was aware of me, says to me, who are you? Why are you here? And I ask, what are you operating? And this person says, you wouldn't understand it's too advanced says to me, you realize what you're doing is dangerous. And then he puts me out of his mind and I couldn't make a connection back with this person. This is my diarization. Target includes individuals wearing uniforms with insignia. There are at least three individuals. Um, uh, my presumption is on board the vessel. One seems to be observing, one operating a control panel, another performing mechanical functions. Seems like they're piloting, piloting an advanced vessel. Seems like space but I was aware of an underground aspect to the target. At one point, one of them engaged with me directly, communicating in a calm, intelligent manner, unfazed. This individual redirected attention to his work. I was unable to get his attention again, nor would he share what he was working on. This, uh, you know, this didn't really intrigue me too much until Daz, you showed us the pictures from Bob Lazar. And it actually, the like the, the shape is very similar. So what I see here is an element right in the middle and you can see, so onboard power supply seems more than propulsion, opens a wormhole, limitless. Um, You can see whatever it is in the containment field, but it's very, very bright. Element on the periodic table, 115 came to mind. This is not, not zero point energy. It's a simple deviation from physics safe and clean and you can see that i wrote it turns the lower portion turns in the opposite direction of the upper portion which creates like a vortex and uh, and and there's another component of harmonics and so whatever this operates it's not just purely mechanical feels like this energy source or or configuration powers the vessel creates a force field around it but it's use it uses vibration or sound acoustics as well but not something you can hear and the pulsing within the containment is safe uses a beam to project a point in front of the vessel which can open a wormhole or portal Um, addresses or points in space and time uh, time becomes irrelevant The operators are thinking this may be the way we travel to other galaxy or galaxies. They're still testing. It shows dependable, promising results. The significance of the element is that it's created and not naturally occurring. Feels like 115 Moscovy. You really can't get closer to calling target than uh, element 115. (laughs) Unbelievable. I mean, (laughs) just got to say that whole thing about time being irrelevant Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the, you know, Lazar uh, stated that before he even saw any discs, he had two days where he was doing briefings. And he said there were two programs that he learned about. I think one was Project Galileo, that was about propulsion. And the other one was called Looking Glass. And that was the physics of time travel. You know, from my job as the, you know, the project manager and a bit of an analyst on it, you know, seeing all the data together and seeing, and it's easier and better seeing you guys go through it as well, um, you know, to get your impressions of it. And there's a lot of, there. well, there's a huge wealth of of corroborative data there, you know, which, mm-hmm. in my, you know, in my opinion, you know, you guys did this blind, it accurately kind of details the events that Bob Lazar said he went through. And in my opinion as well, it adds more credibility to uh, to his story. You know, the, he the, needs to see this. Bob Lazar's got to see this. It, Someone's got to get this to him. 
Well, well, I am speaking to Jeremy Corbell about this yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so do it. I'm sure some of the it. RV sessions and stuff. Um, but I'm sure we'll make the you know, we can make the video privately available to him. Yeah. The guy that taught us the military guy that taught us remote viewing, Glenn Wheaton, is really adamant about keeping uf ufology out of remote viewing he said he says it's joined at the hip and he doesn't like it and he said we don't do ufo targets and very rarely in the like 15 years i trained with him maybe two or three mm -hmm. and he gave us a, a target one night in class and we're working it and I'm picking up a secure facility with a lot of radar antennas and a lot of electronic emanations like satellite and communications, but uh, it's real secure and it's like spying stuff. And there's a guy at a console and he's doing stuff. And then I, I looked and I saw the curve of the earth and I'm like, wow, I'm looking down on earth. That's really beautiful. And then I'm in a, I see that it's on a screen. I go, God, this is a structure looking down on earth. And I and I went to look, and I was face to face with a bug-eyed one of the aliens. And I go, oh, God! And he he went like silly Earthling, like, "Wow, that's a good job getting here. Now get out of here." And I was afraid to draw that in my session. I like Glenn. That is not a session that Glenn would ever give us. And but we're taught to like whatever comes, anything goes through your mind, put it down a paper so i drew that and turned it in he looks at me he goes see i give you interesting targets once in a while uh -huh. but yeah i had a similar to, to uh derek i was aware of this thing and it felt like it became aware of me and went mm -hmm. go away what struck me was uh well a the consistency overall there was like tremendous consistency that all of you had uh dimensions kept coming up time distortions time travel kept coming up and um, that that really impressed me a lot. 